Our next story was written by The Gold Group, and it's called Burrito Princess Gets a Burrito Unicorn. Hi, my name's Coco, and I'm a burrito princess. I live in a bean palace. I want to get a new burrito unicorn because my old one ran away. There might be one outside. You can't pass Burrito Princess Coco. We are protecting this Burrito Unicorn. It is for your father. You can just give it to me, and that's like the same thing. No, your father doesn't want to repeat the last time. Good night, my Burrito Unicorn. I love you so much. I know how much you like to prance in the field, so I'll leave the door open for you. See you tomorrow! Good morning, Burrito Unicorn! Oh no! Where did you go? <laughs> oh no, Coco! What's wrong, daughter? I can't find my Burrito Unicorn! <laughs> That's odd. I remember you put it in the stables last night. I left the door open so it would walk around! She ran away and got lost. You are not responsible enough to own a burrito unicorn yet. Please? This time it'll be different. No, we won't give it to you. Perhaps you could speak to your father about the matter. It is his order that we are following. Hello, father. There's no need to worry about me today. I'm going to go play outside. Have fun! Hmm, I need a plan to get that burrito unicorn without my father noticing. I've got it! I'll make a sleeping potion. I had such a nice time playing outside, Daddy. I uh, got tired, so a servant made lemonade. I have some for you, too. That was very thoughtful of you, my daughter. Thank you very much. Drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it. Ah, how refreshing. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. I'm about ready for my afternoon nap. Bring all the guards to protect the interior. It worked! Now I can sneak out the back door. Wow, it's even more beautiful than I remember. Hello, Burrito Unicorn. I'm Burrito Princess Coco. I'm here to take you home. Yay! I'll name you Beanie. Let's fly to my palace. Come on, Beanie. The back door is this way. Nay! The view from up here is perfect for gazing at rainbows. The end. This story was written by The Blue Group, and it's called Dr. Jazz and the Dancing Hospital. Welcome to the dancing hospital with two million sick children. They all suffer from gullibilitis. They'll believe anything you tell them. Everyone at this hospital will dance to make the children feel happy, but Dr. Jazz has the greatest plan. He'll grab a microphone and sing. I hope you feel better. I hope you feel better too. I hope you feel better. Dr. Jazz is helping kids get healthy. He's a doctor with Jazz it too. Dr. Jazz doesn't like adults cause they can be really rude But kids aren't He wants to buy a poo-poo potion that will cure their disease Stop their gullibilitis, get those kids on their feet Dr. Jazz will get your fingers snapping Dr. Jazz will make your toes start tapping Everybody loves Dr. Jazz! Bob the Donut stole the hospital's money, now there's none to go around. He's experiencing homelessness and he needs to buy a house. Dr. Jazz asked the government to tell everyone to donate money to the 
the hospital till gullible itis is done. Dr. Jazz is gonna buy that cure, those kids are gonna get better for sure, cause everybody loves Dr. Jazz. They raised five million dollars and 99 cents from all the people who wanted to help. They spent it on cuckoo potions and gullible itis scanners so kids could get well. Dr. Jazz is swell. Bob the Donut got arrested by the baguette police. Bob gave back all the money he stole. The Dr. Jazz asked the police to let him go. Dr. Jazz bought Bob a house so he wouldn't need to steal. He also bought all the medical equipment he needed. What a deal! Dr. Jazz helped all the children till they were cured. They got better, jumped for joy, and all spread the word. Dr. Jazz will get your fingers snapping. Make your toes start tapping. He's the doctor with pizzazz. A healthy dose of razzmatazz. Everybody loves Dr. Jazz. The end. This story was written by Ayla, RJ, and Harper. And it's called Mr. Nicebody teaches people to be nice. Some stories make us sing. Some stories make us shout. You're amazing. We're celebrating. That's what this show's about. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, kids. It's me, your pal, Story Wrangler, Steph. I hope you're having a great day. I sure am and it just got better because we got mail from our good friend mr nicebody he lives in no money no money no money no california do you know where that is i'll show you it's right there let's open it it says dear story wranglers I hope this letter finds you happy and healthy. Aw, that's so nice, Mr. Nicebody. I'm doing good, and the weather is lovely. But there was a villain named Barry's Coabunga trying to take over the world and make everybody mean because his childhood wasn't very good and his bucket was empty. Mr. Nicebody needs everybody to be nice because he wants everybody's bucket to be full. When you're happy, your bucket is full and overflowing. When you're okay, your bucket is half full or even half empty. But when you are sad, your bucket might be completely empty, like Barry Kawabunga's bucket. Sometimes things in life happen that make us sad or angry, and we want to be mean because there's nothing nice left in our buckets to give. Let's keep reading. So I got the other people to team up with me and defeat Barry's Kawabunga with compliments and hugs. We said things like, you're cool, I like your hair, and cool name. That's so sweet. Everybody had enough in her bucket to give a little bit to Barry's Kawabunga. His bucket's getting fuller. Ever since that day, everybody was nice. Even Barry's Kawabunga. I love that. Mr. Nice Body taught everyone to fill each other's buckets. That must have felt really nice for Barry's Kawabunga to get a little love and grace. It sounds like he really needed it. I hope you have a great rest of your day. It's nice to fill other people's buckets and have your bucket filled as well. And remember, it's okay if your bucket is feeling a little empty. You can always give yourself some love too. P.S. Tell the kids of Jocelyn Elementary 
that I think they're awesome, especially the third grade authors, and extra especially, Ayla R.J. Ed Harper. I sure will, Mr. Nicebody. Thank you for the sweet letter. And look, he sent a picture along with it. I'm so happy we got to read this letter together. My butt gets full to the tippy top, and I hope yours is a little fuller too. See you next time, my friends. Adventure is out there. The, the end. end. This story was written by Danya, Josie, and Rajon, and it's called The Haunted Wedding Gown. Once upon a time in La Playa Lucinante, there was a tiger y una elefante. He is Joseph, she is Valentina, él es muy bueno en la cocina. In La Playa se están casando, they are getting married, at least that was the plan though. They didn't know, no estaban listos, the show was a no-go, algo imprevisto. Una boda en La Playa, una boda en La Playa. Vestido de boda embrujado. Valentina se quiere casar con Joseph because he is a very good cook. Se puso un vestido de boda, it is a very good look. But since her wedding gown is haunted, le dio ganas de comerse. Al tigre, run away, corre, save the day. Hey, she wants to eat you! Joseph bought her a new vestido rosa and put it on her so fast. She didn't realize es una cosa misteriosa, a new vestido rosa. Los tigres son super rápidos y los elefantes son lentos. So it makes sense. Tiene sentido. And ever since that day in La Playa Lucinante, el tigre y la elefante elegante, the wedding gown burned, se casaron. And Valentina got to eat, yeah, toda la comida que quería. Just not Joseph. No te comas al tigre. Una boda en la playa, una boda elegante en la playa, la playa. The End This story was written by Alizé, Enzo, Gianna, and Joshua. And it's called The Mean Broccoli Wife. Once upon a time, there was a broccoli prince named Daddy. Greetings, royal broccoli subjects. It's me, Prince Daddy. He lived in Broccoli Land. He had a wife named Evelina, who was very mean to him. <laughs> that shade of green makes you look lame, and I hate your tiny crown, and you smell like asparagus. She would yell and break things. I hate this and that and you and bedtime. And I hate Mondays and rainy days and sticky fingers and dogs named Ralph and pickles. I hate everything. 
Prince Daddy wanted his wife to be grateful and nice, like him. Evelina, my wife, I love you. I just wish you could be grateful and nice like me. But she was cursed to be mean by Lucifer when she was just a baby. Prince Daddy, you know I can't be nice. How I wish I could, but you see, it all happened when I was just a sweet little baby broccoli sprout. Oh my, what a cute baby. I simply go bananas for cute babies. Yeah, like, you never know when a really cute baby's going to turn up. Orange, you so glad this broccoli baby is cute and sweet and nice. That baby is too cute. Nobody ever thinks I'm cute. Let's see how cute they think she is when I curse her to be mean. Hit it, boys. Evelina! I curse you and you will always be mean. The meanest broccoli you've ever seen, yeah. I curse you to break and throw the things. Because I'm mean. And now you're the worst. And I'm just the worst. Because I am Lucifer. <laughs> so you see, it's not my fault. Are you mean? Are you always breaking things? Were you cursed by Lucifer as a baby? Come to Kind College, where we can turn that frown upside down. But you don't have to take it from me. Just listen to this real testimony from one of our past students. I used to not care about anybody. I mean, I didn't care at all. But thanks to Kind College, I learned to be nice and care about others. Thanks, Kind College. Kind College is accredited by the Broccoli Land Commission of Unaccredited Universities. Kind College is now offering exciting classes in Genuine smiles, opening doors, pulling out chairs, helping old ladies across the street, thank you cards, compliments, handshakes, sharing, being respectful, VCR repair, and many more. So what are you waiting for? Call 1-800-GET-KIND today. Then, the prince sent his wife to Kind College for four years so she could learn how to be nice. And ever since that day, she was finally nice. I'm so proud of you, Evelina. The broccoli prince felt happy. I feel happy. Because Evelina was finally respectful. The end. This story was written by Kennedy, Eli, Jen, and Carter. And it's called Colorful City. Once upon a time, there was a storm skeleton. Hi, I'm Bob. Storm skeleton, that's me. See my storm cloud? I'm gonna go visit White City Just to see what I can see I want the whole world to be colorful and exciting I want everyone to sing this song I want the whole world to be colorful and exciting Grab a paintbrush and sing along Here we are in White City Where everything is white and boring Why is everything white? We ran out of materials to make paint Now it's so boring we're practically snoring. 
Our food is white, our houses are white, even our plants lost their color. Look, I'm new here, maybe there's something fun to discover. There's nothing new, just go away, don't come back another day. But I'm Bob, the storm skeleton. <laughs> you people have bad vibes. What's the matter with you? Wake up and smell the roses. You act like you're not alive. I want the whole world to be colorful and exciting. I want everybody to sing this song. But this city is just white and everyone is rude and boring. Oh, you've got me so upset. My storm cloud is going to start roaring. Rain cloud, rain on down, rain all over White City. Rain cloud, rain on down, show them no pity. Oh, look, look what's happening look. to the plants. What's happening? The rain, the rain made, made them colorful. With materials from the plants, we can make paint. I'm so happy, I think I'm going to faint. Oh, let's paint everything we're feeling happier. Thank you, Bob. You are so clever. Let's keep on painting. White City is so colorful now. We can be happy forever. We want the whole world to be colorful and exciting. Come on, everybody, sing this song. We want the whole world to be colorful and exciting. We've got a colorful city now. Everybody grab a paintbrush and sing along. Hooray! Woohoo! Woohoo! The end. This story was written by Leo, Arthur, and Veda. And it's called Burger Godmother, the most wanted in wild Louisiana. Once upon a time, there was a burger godmother hiding from the French fry government in an abandoned restaurant in Louisiana. <sighs> Come on, doggy. I've been searching all over wild Louisiana for a place to hide, but there are French fry operatives everywhere. Oh, what is this? An abandoned restaurant? Well, doggone it, this looks as good a place to hide as any. Hey, doggy, let's get in there. She wanted to live in the restaurant because she had to protect her magic from the government so they couldn't take over the world using her magic. Found a burger, my favorite. Hear, hear. This meeting of the French fry government is officially in session. Thank you, Vice President Crinkle Cut. As president, I promised you all we would take over the world. And take over the world, we shall! When I discovered my powers as a baby in Baton Rouge, I solemnly swore I'd only use this magic spatula for good. Once, I saved an entire village from a bona fide lizard by wrapping him up in humongous burger buns. There was the time I put out a 30 mile long wildfire using nothing but ketchup and mayonnaise. And who could forget that sinking ship? I saved all the sailors by making them lifeboats out of gigantic slices of cheddar cheese. I've always used magic to save lives. But the French fry government wants to harness my powers and use them to take over the world. I guess I'll just have to hide here, even though it is awful lonesome. Maybe I could use my powers to bring the restaurant to life. Then I wouldn't be so lonely. If only I could think of the right spell. Hmm. But the French fry government found her hiding. Freeze, Burger Godmother. You flipped your last patty. You thought you could hide, but no one escapes our salty clutches. 
They took her to a jail cell deep in the mountains and tried to take her powers using their burger meter. Our scientists have developed an advanced device known as the burger meter. With one flip of a switch, your powers will be transferred to us forever. <laughs> Activate the burger meter. Nothing would bring me more joy. Oh no, I feel my magic is leaving already. If only I could reach my magic spatula, then I could cast an irreversible spell. Reach, Burger Godmother, reach, reach. <gasps> then she waved her wand around her and disappeared. She used a special spell that could not be reversed. And ever since that day, she has been the most wanted in Louisiana by the French Fry government. The end. This story was written by Sarah, William, and Avery, and it's called The Bacon Bulldog. upon a time there was a baby bulldog named bacon bacon harassed his owner in the house so he could get more bacon flavored treats his owner is named waverly but you can call him wavy because we're friends like that Wavy was happy about giving his puppy treats. He loved to see his puppy bacon. Bacon, the baby bulldog. He's salty and sweet, friendly but crazy. Bacon, the baby bulldog. He's salty and sweet, friendly but crazy. And bacon wanted bacon. story was written by Aleutian, Rem, and Joshua, and it's called Gusto the Ghost Donkey and His Potatoes. Once upon a time, at a haunted Coliseum farm, there was a donkey ghost named Gusto. Hi, I'm Gusto the Ghost Donkey. Eeyaw. Gusto loved the haunted Coliseum farm. Wow, look at all these potatoes. I could cook so many things with them. I could cook french fries. And baked potatoes. A 
possibilities are endless. Yeehaw. But the only thing stopping Gusto from getting some potatoes was the ruler of the farm, evil Emperor Crawly Crab. No one can take any of my potatoes because they're my precious treasures. Ha 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 ha! Gusto flies to his basement to think of a plan. Hmm, how am I gonna get those potatoes? Hmm. I know! I'll use Alter and Terra, my magic sword, to stab the potatoes when the Emperor isn't looking. He'll never know it was me. Now I just have to wait till Emperor Crawly Crab isn't looking. Yeehaw. Now's my chance! Gusto goes all around the haunted Colosseum farm, getting as many potatoes as he can with his magic sword altering terror. Wow! I can't believe I got all these potatoes without Emperor Crawly Crab knowing! Hmm, I wonder what he would say if he found out. What? Someone took my potatoes? My precious treasures? And ever since that day, Gusto the Ghost Donkey got his potatoes from a local farm because he was still kind of scared of the Emperor. The End! This story was written by Casper. Parissa, Aiden, and Bella, and it's called Jack the Ballerina Battle Knight. See, this is the tale of the Battle Knight Jack, whose heart was trapped in a cage. See, Jack was a knight, but he knew he was more, that he was destined to dance on the stage. I am a knight, but swords give me a fright, yet every day I fight for our town. Here in Bikini Rotten, I have forgotten what it is my heart, and I feel down. Because I, I just want to dance, and I, I just want to prance. Breaking away from my dumb day job Hear the applause from the audience mob I don't want to fight Cause I'm Jack The ballerina battle knight Today's the day I'm gonna ask the ballerina agents If I can dance on their stage Oh no, here they come You can do this You just need to show them you can do this Oh, um Ballerina agents Uh, can I? Dance on your stage? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> See, we don't let knights out onto the stage because their arm gets in the way of their dance. Please, just give me a chance. No armor, no armor. But it has to stay on then. No dancing, no dancing. But I promised my family I'd never take it off. No armor, no armor. Just give me a chance. No dancing, no dancing. Please. No armor. What? No dancing. Please. No armor. No dancing, no dancing, no dancing. Because I just want to dance. And I just want to prance. I'm stuck here in my dumb day job. I'll never hear the audience mob. I don't want to fight, but I'm just a battle knight.
nobody's looking dance, 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 d